Dead Season is a mysterious podcast for D&D nerds, hosted by Knocked Prone. Find more ways to support our show in the episode description. You all step through this memory portal back into the Pinkerton Manor study. The portal opens in the same spot where you left it. As you guys are stepping through this soul portal back into the astral plane, what would you like to do? Is the body of my friend still there? No. Interestingly enough, Reaper Ravel's body is gone. Is the scene cleaned up or... There's no blood. It doesn't look like there's been a secondary crime committed in this room. Okay. So we walk back through and we're with Reaper Dave. Yes, Reaper Dave and the other Reapers that were accompanying Dave uh, dispersed throughout the manor to continue the investigation. And Dave looks over at your group and says, if you guys could help out with... Talroth, at least, could if you could help out with looking around and seeing if you find anything. We've got one lead is pretty much it. We we found a, a little kid walking around in the in the halls of this manor post crime scene. Yes. It, do you so like do you have the kid or did he escape? Yeah. No, he's he's here. Well, he might be a friend of mine. Well, <laughs> uh, hope hopefully <laughs> hopefully because he's he's been very hostile. With us. Uh, do you know the name by chance? Chet? Chet. Okay. I believe I believe I know this this no. young lad. Chap. Chap, that's right. I'm trying to double check my, my brain, but yes, that seems correct. <laughs> yeah, roll me a wisdom save. <laughs> Both of them are close enough. I'm sure it's the one. He's a little rascal, but I think he knows my son, so I'd be more than uh, happy to interrogate him. I think I have a little leverage, too. He kind of like backstabbed me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you oh. got beef oh. with a child? <laughs> yeah. Currently, we're keeping him in the the library like office. Good so, spot a library for a child. Well, the reason <laughs> there uh, that is true. Well, we're keeping him in the office because not because like we want to keep him there, but because he's been attacking people. When, when they try to approach him. And we've kind of got him cornered in this office. If you feel like you could get like in, in with him, that'd be great. I, I'm very much wanting to give it a try. I'll be honest. I think this group is very equipped to handle little kids. So. Chai, Chai was a mother. This. And Zale was a father. So we're... we're... And I am a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but Finn. Finn. Oh. <laughs> Finn! Finn! <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh, yeah. You're yeah. also a father. <laughs> yes. And I am an experienced executioner. <laughs> <laughs> All good skills. <laughs> Wonderful. You guys are free to uh, poke around. Do we wish to try to find a place to rest before we dive head into this? Uh, we don't need to worry about some child. Let's let's do a little bit, but we do need a rest at some point. I can go a bit longer without resting. All right, I let's do it. Okay. So, do we separate from the guy talking to us as we head to the yeah, library? Yeah, they continue investigating. A few of them go down a hallway, and he opens up the study door, and you guys can see this massive library that you remember being in not a day ago. So, on our way in... Like, while we're walking there, I just want to, like, address the party. Is anybody else concerned that on our way out of here, Tauroth and maybe the rest of us was probably the Astral Plane's most wanted, and suddenly we're, like, back on everybody's team? I do not know if Captain Pinkerton shared 
the details of his lies. I think... Speaking. Hold on! I had a Javi. I, mean, I had an idea. <laughs> Javi had an idea. He's gonna pull out his bag of holding and he's gonna start fiddling through it. The last time we were here, we found something. We found this note. Uh, Chai gave me this note, but I, I didn't have a time to look at it. Now that we're back in this place, it makes me think maybe we ought to take a second look. Tarath. I think this may be something you might want to see. Are you okay if I read it out loud? Please, please. For all the listeners, I've had said no the whole game. <laughs> My dearest baby brother, Captain Pinkerton, I am writing concerning your most recent project, Reaper Tauroth. It pains me to express my concerns on this matter, but recent events with your... It's crossed out. Have left me deeply troubled. While I understand the necessity of such endeavors in our line of work, I cannot help but feel a sense of disappointment in the direction this particular venture has taken. I fear that Reaper Talros' actions will ultimately jeopardize the delicate balance we have worked so hard to maintain. It appears that Reaper Talros has been poking his nose where it doesn't belong. As you know, our operatives rely heavily on discretion and subtlety, subtlety, yet he seems intent on drawing the entire astral plane onto our scent. I fear if you do not take care of this squeaky wheel, that you will have big problems on your hands. Furthermore, I would like to address your concerns with my affiliations with the falsely departed. I assure you that this goose is getting ready to lay its first of many golden eggs. If you continue to overlook our misuse of soul meadow resources, I can assure you that you will be back together with elder brother Hugh soon enough. Stay faithful, your most favorite sister. A P.S. Please issue an order to your fellow Reapers that there will furthermore no longer be any snooping about the Red Herring fishery. Its abandonment has left the building highly radioactive and its exposure to its radioactivity will have some soul-splitting effect of the astral dissonance field. I would hate for either of your projects to be cut prematurely. P.S. S. I hereby request the decommission of Reaper Tauroth immediately. Give him the bell. I don't... Oh, the uh, bell. <laughs> and I'll, like, reach around. Don't I have the bell? The bell would ring near the end, and so I gave it to him to... Yes. So just, like, out of... With it coming up, I'll just kind of pull it up out to, like, look at it and careful not to, like, jingle it. It doesn't have a It doesn't hammer. have a hammer in it. Still. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that the red herring fishery is not radioactive. Zell and I ourselves went in there before ever encountering anything to do with this before we met you. As well, while I did suspect, the Pinkertons have been taking multiple actions against the Astral Sea and Soul Meadow and against the Raven Queen herself. I... The Falsely Departed. The... I believe we are the Falsely Departed. Roll me a history check, Talroth. I was gonna say. And I have questions for you. Two, which I think turns into a one. Ooh, Ooh. a dirty one. I guess I will use an inspiration. You use an inspiration? Okay. okay. Ooh. Oh! A natural 20. Yeah! Natural 20. Woo! All right. So with a natural 20, you would remember that the Falsely Departed is a local cult yeah. in Soul Meadow who believes that if they feed some sort of being, that it will grant them access back into the material plane they believe that they were falsely killed and that they should not be where they are and so they praise this being that is believed to be a death reverser a death reverser exactly and uh with this note and your natural 20 
Lady Pinkerton was one of the heads of this cult. What do you know of the falsely departed? Am I not supposed to be dead? Is Chai not supposed to be dead? No, no. The falsely departed are a specific sect of cult of the souls that reside here, believing they were wrongly transported here and seek to return, essentially damning themselves from their afterlifes. Have any of them ever made it back? Not that I know of. They worship a a creature of some kind that through consumption allows them to return to life. I fear this creature may be the Ica that we have encountered. What does it mean, decommission? Is that something you have heard of? Do they decommission reapers? What does that mean? I think it was alluding to the fact that they should get rid of me through death or other means. Reapers move on to their afterlife with the Raven Queen after ferrying so many souls into their proper afterlife. As I've explained, Zell is my final soul. It's possible that they wish to encourage my journey instead, wishing me good riddance. I'm sorry, maybe I'm just confused, but what do these people have against you? I don't understand why they're so upset. Many of the Reapers fall into a gray area between what the Raven Queen believes and what the Bad Infinium believes. The Bad Infinium, for those who are not familiar, is a different group of souls who performed misdeeds in their lives or otherwise have undesirable afterlives waiting for them. As such, they seek to remain in Soul Meadow for as long as possible. They are at direct odds with the Reapers and our beliefs, but many of the Reapers grow too complacent in their work, not seeking to ferry enough souls or not putting their heart into the matter. It is a difficult task, but one that should be completed. Many Reapers find themselves in a... a slump. Like I said, somewhere between their duties and bad infinium beliefs. I do not agree with this, and as such, the Reapers and I have a mutual affiliation, but not entirely friendly relationship. Well, to add, she mentioned if he continued to ignore their misuse of the Astral Plane's resources, he would soon find himself with his brother Hugh, who I believe to have cheated death. So perhaps this method they are using has proven effective in the past. Or his method of cheating death may have been, such as in Talroth's memory, different and unconnected. I would say the changing of the memories seems to be somewhat tied to the Iker itself. Perhaps Hugh's path back to life has shown a path for that that the rest of the Pinkertons are now following. As Zell brings up the name Hugh and is talking about Hugh Pinkerton, you guys will notice Javi's gauntlets will almost engage. His fists will clench and he will say, I have many reasons to find Hugh Pinkerton. I want to find Captain Pinkerton if he can get me to Hugh. Well, let's see if our friend has any help. Oh, yes. Let's go ta- talk to the young chap. Oh, Chet! Uh, oh, guys! <laughs> I had a little wave of red blood over my eyes for a second. <laughs> I'm back, baby! Let's go hang out with a little kid. <laughs> and Javi likes some water. <laughs> help cool him off a little. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> 
Harvey, maybe <laughs> you would be interested in sticking behind and helping me search for some clues. I will. We're going to follow Chai and Zell as you guys approach the office, the library office, and you see a closed door with water trickling underneath it. What would you guys like to do? I'd like to go and knock on the door and be like, <clears throat> excuse me, chap, can we have a chit chat? Are you in there? You didn't leave the sink running, did you? I'm not talking to any of you. You don't have my best wishes in mind. But chap, how will you know until we have spoken? Yeah, you... I, I don't. I don't believe we've met before. Just reapers trying to trick me. I have a secret to tell you. We're not reapers. No, <gasps> definitely not. <gasps> You're not reapers. You. Do you Shh, pinky don't, swear? Don't tell anyone. Do you pinky swear? <laughs> I, I pinky swear. I'm a big... A little pinky <laughs> goes underneath the doorway. <laughs> gotta do the whole... Gotta open the door for me to get my pinky through. <laughs> my and... giant pinky is enough to just, <laughs> just touch pinky. Palm it. <laughs> do you want to join my secret club? That sounds like the best thing oh, I've done in a okay. week. Okay. As okay. long as it has a cool handshake. Oh, yeah. man. You will hear from the other room. How dare she? <laughs> <laughs> and the door creaks a little open. And Zell, you see the familiar face of Chap, the the double-crossing soul that you met at the beginning of your journey. I hand him back the knife that I pull out of my back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm surprised you you know this this kid, Zell. How do you know each other? Yes. I'm Chap. Hi, Chap. I'm Chai. Hopefully, <gasps> we won't get too confused, you and I. That rhymed. Chap and Chai having a chit chat. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locking this, this already. This is gonna be so much fun. Chap believes he knows my son Delry. However, surely unaware of the effects of the astral sea, lured me into it and I became unconscious and found myself in a quite precarious situation. But chap, I am... I'm curious. Hi, curious. <laughs> Before we get into that, I, I'm curious what I can help you with. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, just, just because you guys are cool and you say you're not... I guess you pinky swore. That's fair. Okay, I believe that you're not Reapers, but you, you, there has to be some sort of initiation to be part of my club. That seems pretty fair to me. Okay. Perhaps helping you could be part of the initiation. Yes. Oh my gosh. I am craving a mud pie. If you could bring me a mud pie, I'd be so happy. And then I'll probably think... That'll give me enough time for me to to like think of another task for you guys to to do this is so fun point me to the mud yeah yeah um well so i'm the president of this club obviously of course. or is king more fitting because nobody has to elect me i'm just i'm just great let's go with king king chap as the king i declare my subjects bring me a mud pie we're on it. I, I'm like scrambling, like looking around the library. Luckily Apparently, you, there's Chai water is on one the of floor. The finest cooks. Uh, oh. I, I, I <sighs> make a mean mud pie. A mean mud pie. You're not ready for this pie. So you're looking around this library yes. office. Go ahead and roll me. Actually, before you do this, in the Pinkerton Manor, because there are four of you and it would just be so easy for every room to go and be like, I, I do investigation, I do investigation, I do... We're going to do a, a different style of investigation game. In front of you are these little pieces of paper that show your dice pool. In your dice pool, you have a single D20, D12, two D10s, a D8, and a D6. So six dice in total you have different rooms that you can investigate the number to beat on all of these investigation or perception checks depending on which is higher for you is 10 the number to beat is 10 so if you think that a room is less important it might be worth using a d6 also the top number on every dice is considered a crit because uh if you rolled a six and you only have say a plus two to perception that would be sad for it to be like I rolled the highest number and I don't see it. So, 
questions, concerns? Maybe this is too metagame, but do we know how many rooms? Is this the amount of there rooms? There are 12 rooms. 12 rooms, and we all have six rolls to spend them in. Yes. Okay. And we're out. We're out. Um, where Where's the water coming from in general? Yes. That's the so water you I, look, or room I want to head to. So you are. it's in the study, but as you look over Chap, you see that his form is emitting this faint ghostly glow that is casting eerie shadows across the floor. As he moves, there's a soft hum surrounding him, like whispers from distant spirits. The air is cold in his presence. Despite this spectral appearance, there's a sense of innocence and curiosity in his hollow gaze, hinting at the child within. Clenched in his hands is a water gun, its surface shimmering with astral energy. Chai, go ahead and roll me a history check as you're looking over Chap. 17. You recognize the look of Chap, and you can tie it back to the entities that are inside of Talroth's lantern. It looks like Chap is something called Wisp Bound, which means that he is in the process of turning into a Will O Wisp. Ooh. Okay. So what room am I in as I'm like searching for the water? The water is coming off of his water I, gun. I see. Would you like to investigate the office further? I, is there an option to go somewhere? Like, is there somewhere near that is outside? Yes. Assumedly, that's where Mud would be. I would like to go to that room and investigate that room. Yes. So there is a patio that is leading outside of the library. It's room G. What dice would you like to use for your investigation check? Oh. Or perception. Or perception. So I'm going to make a perception check, and I'm going to use my d12. Okay. That's a 10. A 10 is the number to beat. So that's a success. You find a pile of mud underneath one of the patio chairs, and you're able to grab this pile of mud. Um, As you are looking at this pile of mud, you also notice that underneath that chair that you were looking at, A seam has been recently unstitched from the bottom of the chair. As you kind of like pull at the thread, noticing that it's a different color than the rest of the seams, you are able to pull the felt bottom of this chair out completely. And you find blueprints for a project called a better reaper. The rest of the blueprint text seems to be in dwarvish. A better reaper in Dwarvish. Does the picture look blobby? Yes. <sighs> so while Chai is collecting the mud, I want to do some expectation setting with Chai. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go out and do something hard, you like to be rewarded for it, yes? I like rewards. Yes. Yeah. Especially after yeah. you've worked hard, right? Well, it feels fitting. It feels justified. Yeah. yeah. So Chai puts her heart and soul <laughs> into cooking. So when she makes this mud pie, if you don't want her soul to be crushed, you should really give her some praise and perhaps a little bit of a reward for her hard work. Especially if it's not, like, bad. Because if it's bad, then, like, she's dead to me, you know? <laughs> I tell you what, even if it's bad, don't tell her. Talk oh. to me about it, and I'll do you an extra favor. We'll, she puts oh so gosh. much effort into it. Do you want to try my special mixture? Possibly. I made a potion. <laughs> I made a potion. Do you want to try it? Dude, do it. Maybe we should do awesome. some extra experimenting together. I'd like to test this potion out with some various tools and things. Well, you, you just have to drink it and tell me what it does. <laughs> Please. I'm, gonna check his Please. <laughs> I'm gonna take the potion. I'm gonna stall hey, with some. Uh, wh- while you have plus six, plus six to constitution saves for, for 24 while. hours. Yep. So, I'm gonna stall a little bit. I'm gonna look at the coloring. Do like maybe a survival check. Yes. I don't know what do you me, think. Do me. Do me a survival check, please. <laughs> I'm talking, trying to stall. I'm like the coloring is just so good. It's it looks as though it's been master crafted. I'm so glad you think so, because like <laughs> I've been working on this potion for like as long as I can remember, like at least five minutes. <laughs> D 
Dude, you gotta down it. It's a six. I will just tell you what. I'll use this to wash <laughs> down a little bit of that mud pie. <laughs> oh my gosh! That's the oh, that's the best. I it'll probably react really well with the mud pie too. <laughs> like the react. the the potion will get stronger with the mud pie. I'm sure of it. Am I there yet? Have I yes. arrived? So yeah, you arrive and you were looking at Zell holding a bottle of murky <laughs> liquid in a potion bottle, and he looks at you with like okay, okay, desperation first, in his eyes. <laughs> I don't notice. Okay, I don't notice because I'm too preoccupied by the mud pie I made. Okay, let me describe it. The bottom is like drier, cakier mud, okay, for like a solid base. And then I have like more wet mud on the top. So it's got that like smooth top. And I like put a couple of like sticks and leaves in it. So it's like all decorated and everything. It's like in both of my hands. My hands are huge, okay? So it's like I got, I got this big mud pie. <laughs> I, got, I got a mud pie for you right here. Oh my oh. gosh. Eat it. It's yeah. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a constitution save it there. <laughs> Plus six. Thirteen. With a thirteen, you were able to stomach this mud pie. No sweat. It's actually pretty good with oh how my. Chai cooked it. Oh, <laughs> this is now, immaculate. Is that, oh, wow. Ah. You made a good one. Oh. Drink drink the potion quick. Quick. You're right. It needs to be washed uh, out. It does. It does. I'm going to fumble a little bit. Spill just like oh. half of ah. it. But, ah. but then clearly chug the rest. Oh, oh he did Great. It. Great. Uh, make me do a constitution you to... saving throw. My I've jaw's been on the floor. I've okay. been over here like, do it, do it. But I would not have done this. I'm just a bad influence. That That's going to make this a 21. With a 21, you chug this and you are able to understand what this is as you drink it. It is water, sugar, and dirt. Beautiful. Awesome. What does it do? <laughs> what does it do? I'm <laughs> I'm stronger! I did it! I'm going to try to lift the biggest yes! thing in the room I can. Yes! <laughs> yeah, there's a desk in the room. <laughs> As you lift up this desk, make me a luck check. 12. With a 12, a small box... Filled with dozens of bell hammers, falls out of one of these desk compartments. And as you look over these bell hammers, there's a ton of them, and they're each marked with a distinct letter. Upon further inspection, I, I take them. Upon further inspection, you find the letters that are engraved on the bell hammers are the letters A through T. And I think that's a pretty good stopping point for you guys so let's join the other two adventurers 